the reason you struggle with setting boundaries is because you need other people's approval. Cole used to, like, he is a pretty calm demeanor, but he used to lose his fucking shit over everything. I literally said to voice no back, and I was like, you're a fucking joke to your children. Day two of the second ever Elite Mansion Mastermind is about to commence and I'm actually super excited. So yesterday I spoke for eight hours straight talking about core values, leadership, content creation, and being a powerful speaker in general. Today, Brian is actually gonna be going over a lot of his content strategies as well as defining the difference between attention-based content and conversion-based content. You see, a lot of other masterminds that you guys will go to will just talk about theory all right, we'll just ramble about bullshit motivation, but they won't give you actionable steps. And they also will either give you a dissection of what you should do or attention for your own fucking brand, where we give you both. Today is gonna be incredibly valuable. I suggest you subscribe now and watch the entire fucking video. So obviously guys, yesterday was about leadership and a little bit of content creation. The entire goal was to get you guys to step into your power as content creators and leaders for your businesses and yourselves. Who feels like they got an immense amount of value yesterday? Let's make some noise. Yeah. I'm super excited. Who's excited to get a fuckload of value today? Make some noise. Yeah. Perfect. So today there's going to be a lot of different things that Brian goes over. All right, he's gonna be deeply diving into what you need to do to become the best version of yourself to give to the fucking world on top of attention and conversion based content. A lot of you guys are usually only hyper fixated on attention, right? I want more views, I want more eyeballs so I can grow and reach the next level, which is not a bad thing, all right? It's not a bad thing, but you do need to understand the difference between attention based content, getting you eyes, and conversion based content, which will actually get you clients and help you build your fucking business. Brian is going to be going deep into both of these subjects today, giving you guys the dissection you need to create the videos that he has been creating so you can make more fucking money and impact more fucking lives. You guys excited? Yeah! Perfect. What I want you guys to do is give him your full attention today. So I need everybody to repeat after me. I will be present. I will, I will be, be present. present. One more time. I will be present. I will be present. I want you guys to pay attention. Be where your fucking feet are. You all paid for a seat at the table, so be here. All right, I get it. Sometimes you wanna be on your phone, you wanna sell a client, you gotta post on Instagram. We understand we're entrepreneurs, but pay attention to what the fuck this man is going to say to you today because it's gonna blow your fucking mind and it's gonna give you an immense amount of fucking value. So without further ado, make some fucking noise for B-Mark. Let's get it. Cool. So yesterday you guys were in Cole's world. Today you're in my world. Like now, before we get started, I want to talk about my intention for today. My intention for today is to shift your perspective. Yesterday, Cole talked about how attitude shapes life, correct? Like it's our attitude towards a situation that will determine how we behave towards a situation, and how we behave is going to influence the outcome, correct? And so today, my goal isn't to change your life because, truthfully, I can't change your life in the next fucking hour, two hours, five hours. But I can change your perspective. If I change your perspective, you can change your life. Make sense? Yeah. So my intention is to change your perspective. If it's not positive, it becomes negative. Write that down. In all relationships, if it's not positive, it becomes negative. I want you guys to think over your business for a second. How many of you guys have ever taken your clients for granted? Maybe you didn't pay them the attention that they deserved. You didn't get back to the check-ins on time. You forgot to do meal plans. You weren't as attentive to the Facebook group as you should have been. Neutral, but neutral isn't neutral. Neutral becomes negative. This is fucking important. How many of you guys have been in a significant a relationship with your significant other? Josh, the other day you talked about how you need to take a leash on more dates. If it's neutral, it becomes negative because over time, you're actually taking value from her because you're not giving her value. Does this make sense? And it's the same thing with your social media. You're like, I haven't posted on social media in the last fucking two weeks. That's neutral, which actually means it's negative. Because you're taking value away from your audience. You could be impacting, serving, delivering, changing people's lives, but there's somebody on your social media that isn't getting impacted because you're just like, oh, I'm just chilling. Neutral equals taking value. This is the fundamental law that I live my life by. This is like, all relationships are based off of an exchange of value. 
and you're either taking value or you're giving value at all times, period. When you walk into a room, your presence either gives value or it takes value away. And you might not think that, right? Because you're just going there, you're just minding your own business, whatever. But when people look at you, you're either giving them value or they're take, you're taking value away from them. How are you showing up? Write this down. Giving value with an expectation of a return is not value. Who here has ever done a 14 day challenge and fucking flopped? Right? Me too. Right? But if I just do it and I flop and I'm like, oh, I'm such a fucking piece of shit, this didn't fucking work, waste my fucking time, these motherfuckers did all my free shit, they fucking didn't pay me. Is that a mindset that's, gonna, that's conducive to success? Yes or no? no? It's funny, but we do it all the time. Right? I see it all the fucking time. It happens to all of us. I get it. But like, if you're creating value with the expectation of something in return, that's why you're not getting paid. Mm. When you can shift your perception, you can just be like, dude, I'm so fucking happy. I just warmed up 40 prospects. Fuck yes. When they're ready, they're gonna come to me. Because then the whole time, you're just gonna be so excited to serve them instead of serving them with your fucking hand out. No amount of money that you ever make is ever gonna disguise the way that you feel about yourself. The way that you feel about yourself, the perception of value that you have about yourself is based on what? It's based off of the relationship that you have with yourself. Based off the relationship I have with myself, I'm either going to show up as a person of value that gives positive value to the fucking world, or I'm going to show up as a person that doesn't have value, that doesn't perceive my own value because of all the negative value exchanges I've had with myself. I drink, I smoke weed, I sleep in, I'm fucking lazy. Like your next level is waiting for you when you start subtracting the things that you're doing that are holding you back. I don't know if you guys knew this, but Cole's pretty calm, right? You guys see Cole's a pretty calm person? Cole used to, like, he has a pretty calm demeanor, but he used to lose his fucking shit over everything. Craziest temper I've ever seen. We had a client that pissed us off. He would fucking blow a gasket. This was like back in aesthetic nation days. <coughs> he doesn't do that anymore. Because he realized it was a habit that he had that was taking value from his life. He didn't want to be that person, and he eliminated that toxic habit. Oftentimes, the way that we do this is by identifying where we're taking value from ourselves and eliminating those toxic habits and character traits. Mm. Cole Hall also hasn't drank in how many days? Uh, over two years now. Over two yeah. Years. Yeah. yeah. In the moment, Cole perceived drinking as valuable, correct? Yeah. But the relationship that we have with ourselves is based off of a positive or negative value exchange. Now, Cole realized that although drinking was giving him value, quote unquote, it was actually taking more value than it was giving, which is why he eliminated it. Mm -hmm. Can I say one thing? Go. Guys, everybody write this down, please. Guilt is your guideline. A lot of you guys will ignore your conscious, your subconscious, when it is screaming at you in the back of the mirror. You'll do something and then you'll look internally and you know that it'll be bad for you, whether it's drinking or going out or having a conversation or treating somebody a certain way, but then you'll just ignore that feeling. You know what you shouldn't be doing. Your body is telling you. Every time you feel guilt, you should be following what it is telling you, which is to cut out that habit, stop going down that path, stop talking to that individual, stop leaning into those fucking habits. Stop ignoring your gut. It is the thing that will get you to where you want to be. So when you got a, have you ever been on a podcast that you didn't think ever you'd be able to get on? You got on it, and the way you thought you'd get it, it was completely different to how you actually got on it. So can you tell me a time where you, uh, like Ryan Pegg's podcast, yeah. Yeah. was that something that you always wanted to do or it just came up because the opportunity was there? I seized the opportunity. I'm like a, I'm a big believer in seizing opportunity. So like I don't wait for shit. So I, I met Ryan Pineda in person. I talked to you about this too. I met Ryan Pineda in person and uh, at the Muscle event, which guys, write this down, get in the fucking room. Get in the room. So the Muscle hosted an event. It was a limitless event and he had this VIP option, which was like 10K be at his house and meet like 50 to 75 other people. Me and Cole paid the 10 grand to be in the fucking room. And when we were in the room, I was like, who can I meet? And I saw Ryan Pineda and I was like, hey. So I listened to your podcast and I dyed my hair because and I sat down and I fucking had a conversation with him. And then when I sat down with him, I'm like, I want to be on your fucking podcast. And he was like, okay. He was like, he's like, got my number. So I took his fucking number, one sec. I took his number, I texted him. I was like, I'm serious about getting your podcast. He's like, okay, cool. He's like, we'll, we'll chat about it. Next week he hadn't gotten back to me, I fucking texted him again. I'm like, get me on your podcast. Right? So it's like you gotta seize the opportunity. Don't wait for people to come to you. You gotta seize it. Take it. I'll also say you gotta be aware of the individual that you're speaking to. Ryan Pineda is very smart. Alright? He'll put individuals in the room that he can benefit from that will provide a lot of fucking value. You do that with a person like a Hermosi or Andy Pasella or a Gary Vaynerchuk, they'll tell you to go fuck yourself. 
because their perception of value is way higher than what you're able to provide. So we are currently around like a quarter, maybe a third way through day two. Brian is absolutely fucking slaying it. Yeah, it's only 10 a.m. right now, 10, 20. Uh, so we still got lunch and a bunch of other things that we get to dive into. But yeah, Brian's absolutely slaying it. People are getting fucking mad value. Right now, everybody's in groups of six, dissecting different shit that they have learned so far about the day. Um, and also, Brian's fucking donuts that he is making are ridiculous, bro. I've eaten three already. Oh, man. This is the first time I've been able to eat in like three fucking days where I'm like, I've been able to eat throughout the day. My stomach's not fucked up. Oh, I'm going to get fucking fat again. Right now they're doing a round table. There's like four groups of six. I don't even know. We, I think we're missing a group. Uh, but everybody's talking about their mind, body, soul, their business, retention, all right, um, attention, conversion, and they're rating themselves on a scale of one to ten and having a deep conversation with each other and masterminding solutions to each problem. So today is going to be a call to action to become a man or woman of value. In the Dominican Republic, I thought, like, honestly, I've been doing pretty good recently. The business has been growing. My and Chris's relationship has been good. I've been chilling. But when what happens when you chill? You get complacent. Things I'm like, I'm chilling. I'm good. I chew tobacco, I fucking drink a couple times on the weekend, watch a couple TV shows every night. I'm like, I'm good, I'm making money. Then in the Dominican, boom, third day I got there, I literally got so fucking sick, I couldn't <laughs> leave the house. It was fucked. And then I like, I was on a meeting with Cole, and then I was like, I gotta go, bro. I'm like, I'm, I gotta peace out. So I went to bed after the meeting. Slept for like three hours. Woke up three hours later, fever, chills, felt like absolute dog shit. I was like, this isn't good. I was like, I'm just gonna sleep it off, wake up the next day, I'll feel better. So I went to bed. Woke up the next day, I felt five times worse. I was like, this is not good. I ended up laying in bed for like five, six, seven days in a row. And in that six, five, six, seven days in a row, you had a lot of time to like come to Jesus, for lack of a better term. <laughs> but nothing to do except be with me and my own thoughts. And when I was with me and my own thoughts, I was I started to realize like, I'm not playing to my full potential. I've like started to rest on my laurels a little bit. I'm relying on the fact that my sales team is really good right now. They're crushing it. Janelle's running the programs right now. She's doing an amazing job. Students are getting great results. I'm like, I'm just chilling. But what happens if you don't water the grass? Is that a positive or a negative value exchange? Negative. 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 negative, right? Neutral is negative. I realized that wasn't playing to my full potential. So I started asking myself, and this is the question we're gonna be, you know, that I asked you guys recently, is that's where am I taking value for myself? Watching TV all the fucking time. Drinking on the weekends. I'm not getting fucked up, but I'm drinking on the weekends. Chewing tobacco every day. Not working as intentionally as I could be working. I'm like working, but then I do basically the bare minimum to sustain my business, which at this point, like, I built an entire fucking operation. So I literally just need to post content and then fucking peace out, show up the coaching calls. It's pretty cool. But I'm not fucking pushing myself. I'm not challenging myself. I'm not like pushing for the next level. So in the Dominican Republic, I realized that I wasn't playing to my full, full potential, so I decided to start stepping up. And today, I'm gonna to be calling you guys to take action and step up in your own life. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. You guys can come to this weekend, you can absorb all this information, you can take all this value in, and you can go back and do absolutely fucking nothing with it. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. We need something to challenge ourselves. This is why I love doing fitness competitions, because every single time I do a show, I'm committed to this deadline and this, this like intense push to become the best version of myself. You said something the other day, Paris, that I resonated with, and you were like, I didn't want to interrupt Cole because he was in flow. And you, and you were like, I realized that when I'm in prep, I'm all dialed in, I'm all focused, and I had the same realization, like in the Dominican. I was like, why, why do I just wait till I'm fucking prepping for a show to actually go all in on my shit? Why don't I just go all in on my shit? So I told myself, I was like, I'm not doing a show this year, and I'm gonna be all in on my shit. This is a call to action to become a man or woman of value. One of my new, my new year's resolution was to eliminate gossip completely. And I still catch myself doing it. Mm. And it is really kind of like brewing a lot more negativity into my life when I do do it. Mm. So I'm just going to decide that that is no more. Bam! There we go. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And listen, you're not perfect. So as soon as you catch yourself, you stop talking immediately. Yeah. You're like, never mind. Yeah. Never mind. You're like, you're breaking a habit. Totally. When you break a habit, you're gonna start speaking, and I'm like, nope, never mind. Mm -hmm. I got nothing to say. I, I honestly, I was, I, I used to be very bad for it as well. Yeah. And I would, I would be about to say something to curse, and I'm like, oh, never mind. Mm -hmm. Just like, I'm like, never mind. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't fucking matter. We rule. Yeah. We yeah. rule.
If we wouldn't say, if we wouldn't say it with the camera rolling, mm. why are we talking about it? Like, why are we talking about it? Yeah. I love that. Who also like to share? I just found that like I wasn't valuing myself enough, and, like yeah. doing things to make myself a valuable person. So like, I can't remember the last fucking time I like did a morning routine. Um, yeah. And then also me where I had like a really good conversation, and she got a lot of shit out of me that I just didn't expect. Um, but having those like deep conversations with people that I need to, but also just letting stuff go and like not letting it linger. Um, but that's also like playing a role in my business because if I don't look at myself as a valuable person, like how can I keep helping these people? And I just keep having these thoughts of like, what am I doing? Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna have like a morning routine. Um, and my thing is like always being on my phone in the morning. So I'm just gonna like put it up, maybe buy a second phone. I don't fucking know, <laughs> probably yeah, will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I Yay. love that. Round of applause. Awesome. One of the things, and this is important for all of you, who here struggles with setting boundaries? The reason you struggle with setting boundaries is because you need other people's approval. Yep. That makes sense? And so I value myself so much that I don't need your approval. And so I don't have a problem setting a boundary with you if you message me at 10 p.m. and you're like, eh, eh. I'm like, I'm with my wife, don't fucking message me at 10 p.m., okay? Mm -hmm. Like, don't expect, you can message me, but if you're like, I need to respond right now, I'm like, me and you have an issue. Like, I don't have an issue doing that because I value myself. And so the more that you build value within yourself, Judith, and the more that you value your own existence as a human, because you keep, keep pulling into yourself with the morning routines, the affirmations, the visualizations, etc., the more that you'll, because I know that me and you talked about boundaries, yeah. it'll be easier for you to set boundaries because you value yourself. Perfect, guys. So what we're going to be diving into in a minute here is the script writing slash my process on how to create awareness content, attention content. Why? Because, by the way, uh, y'all didn't think that I checked in, but I did. Matt told me only around 50% of you guys actually filmed fucking videos yesterday. All right. He also told me that through the process of you guys filming videos yesterday, uh, a lot of you guys went very fast. Okay, in the breakdown of the camera started and you instead of just fucking slowing down the tonality and dissecting it, which is great because today we're going to be doing some script writing and some actual filming. So we'll be in front of you actually making you film, following our tonality, following our attitudes, following our flow so you guys can get your point across in a powerful fucking way. Sounds good? So when it comes down to attention and awareness-based content, again, the entire ideology behind it is to create controversy, all right? inspire emotion or trigger emotion, or at least make somebody listen to you because you have some sort of value back in what you were saying. Who here found it a little bit difficult to fucking make their scripts yesterday? Put up your head, be vulnerable. This is what I was thinking, okay? I thought that was gonna be pretty much the exact same thing because every single time I bring up script writing to people, they freak the fuck out because they feel like I'm trying to tell them to write Spanish or some shit. Um, but it's honestly a lot easier than you guys think it is, all right? Or at least every time I say this, Brian's like, it's easy for you, motherfucker. It's not easy for the rest of us. And I'm like, well, it's because I've been doing this shit since Brian met me, all right? Guys, my brain doesn't work like a lot of you guys. And what I mean by that is, honestly, I fucking hate writing copy. I fucking hate it. When I have to sit down to write a post to break something down, my entire brain shuts off. Why? Because to express like this is confusing to me. I just want to say what's on my mind. And that's why I usually don't go more than three sentences without saying fuck. I say what is on my mind. Does this make sense, guys? Yes. All right, how many of you guys now know, just from sitting here with me for the last two days, that I am the exact motherfucker you see on my social media, correct? Because yes. it's just how I move. It's how I act. I say what's on my fucking head. So when it came down to script writing, doing live streams, creating Instagram posts, Facebook posts, and way more, I just do a very simple process, which is a brain dump. And that is how I script my fucking videos. So when it comes down to this style of content, before I even show you guys the scripting process or more, I need to make sure that that point gets across because this style of content is gonna get a lot of people pissed off at you. This style of content is gonna get a lot of people fucking angry at you. This style of content is gonna get a lot of people who have contradicting opinions, and unless you have your fucking big boy panties on, you're not gonna get anywhere. Because you're gonna create one video, you're gonna get a bunch of comments that disagree with you, and you're gonna be like, fuck this, man. Everybody hates me, archive. Archive, archive, archive. Or then you're gonna be like, oh, it's so fun fucking with these haters, and you're gonna fuck with them for like five minutes until it becomes depressing. And then you're like, why does everyone hate me? I've seen it, all right? I've done it. Stay out of it, okay? 
We get into it. I used to do it a lot. Brian used to do it a lot. A lot of people we know used to do it a lot. Just stay away from it. Allow people to have their fucking opinions. Deal, thumbs up, everybody agrees. Good. Um, so there was a dude who fucking tried to join my program. I don't remember his name, but it was on Instagram. I showed Brian this conversation. And we were having a very simple combo. But when we got down to the price, which by the way, guys, all right, I started the fucking Wolves Den. I literally just did that because I wanted to help individuals with their mindset and their fitness. It's $300 a month. All right, I do no lead gen for it. I don't fucking promote it. That's honestly a different story. It's because I'm bad at fucking asking. We're not even gonna go into that. All right, and we had one person reach out to me and I had a conversation with them. When it came down to the fucking price, I said it was $300 a month. He's like, oh, I can't afford that, homie. I'm like, what? I'm like, what do you fucking mean? I'm like, you literally just told me that you hate your fucking life. You're depressed every day. You fucking hate the man that you see in the mirror. You're not the fucking example that your children need, like all this other stuff. And then he made the joke to me where he was like, honestly, homie, like I just, I just can't fucking think about spending that money. And honestly, like the time commitment, uh, I'd rather spend the money on fucking burgers to fucking deal with my pain. Something simple like that, McDonald's. How vicious you guys think my voice note was after that? <laughs> Brian heard it. I literally sent a voice note back and I was like, you're a fucking joke to your children. You ain't gonna get any fucking sympathy or compassion from me, dog. Don't joke around about going to McDonald's and spend $300 a month on fucking burgers. Wake the fuck up and realize what you need to do as a man. And then I did a podcast about him and a YouTube video about him. Cause I don't give a fuck. I left his name out of it. Then six months later, he DM me, homie, I've lost 50 fucking pounds. I've stepped up as a fucking man. I don't go to McDonald's anymore and I can run around with my children because I hold people to the standard. Feel me? You guys gotta start holding people to your fucking standard which goes right back to the values and principles we talked about yesterday, correct? Hold people to the fucking standard. Stop being afraid of offending others because your opinion matters. Write that down. You guys are educated coaches. Your opinion matters. If you're not gonna talk just to benefit yourselves, talk for me, please. I can't fucking do this on my own. There's 8 billion people. We gotta start telling the truth, right? Like we gotta start fucking speaking. And again, there's levels. You don't gotta be intense like me. This is just who I am. I've got no other gear, all right? Like it's fucking, when I get passionate, it just fucking comes out. And I, I talk to Cade like this. I'm like, yeah, bro! And he's like, he gets all smiley and runs around the fucking house and shit out. It's funny, we thought he was gonna freak out. He loves when I yell, Brian sees it. Brian comes in now and Brian's like, yeah! And Cade's like, oh! He gets all fucking lit. It's hilarious. Oh, he loves it. He fucking loves it. So it's, it's, it's just the level that you play at. Find your fucking lane and start running. You guys get this? Awesome. So you just basically want to be a business coach and income coach for women to help them step into their power, correct? Yes. Awesome. So we now need, like that is our niche, okay? So around that niche, go to a new page. All right, keep, save this one so you don't lose it. Perfect. And I just want you to like brand new blank page. We're gonna write down our niche at the top of it. Okay, well I wanna do that to you. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so we write it down and it is helping women become powerful businesswomen, right? Powerful income generators. Whatever like is in your brain, that's the goal here. This is why I kind of remove Brian from the convo, remove me from the convo. It's got to come from your soul, your thought process, or you won't be in line with it. Make sense? Yeah. Dope. So we got our niche. Underneath that, I want you to write value, proof, connection, documentation. Connection, documentation. Yep. Right? So when we look at these, all right, if you go under documentation, Documentation is posting any type of content that is showing you, all right, doing what the fuck you say you can. We don't walk around with our scale weight on our forehead, so why are you giving that number so much power? We don't walk around with our scale weight on our forehead, so why are you giving that number so much power? There we go. People notice the shape of your body, so how much weight doesn't freaking matter. People notice the shape of your body, so how much you weigh doesn't actually matter. There we go. Yes, trends in body weight are important to look at, but you need to... Slow, no, super slow on this one, because you've been going like hard, then you went a little bit softer, now I want you to like pause in the middle of this one and hit it. But you need to let go of the emotional attachment that you have to that morning man. 
And I didn't even know you were gonna say emotional attachment. That's perfect because you added the tonality in and like the touch point while hitting that word. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Perfect, go ahead. Lower doesn't mean better and higher doesn't mean worse. I want you to hit lower harder. Okay. Like lower doesn't mean better and higher doesn't mean worse. Okay. Feel me? Lower doesn't mean better and higher doesn't mean worse. I like that. Understand the bigger picture. Going for runs every day, because that's what Ali did, is like using this instead of using this. I get it. If you want to train in the fucking Stone Age, do your thing. But in 2024, if you want to win your fights, you need to follow me for more value. <laughs> you're, you're a content machine now. I fucking <laughs> love it, bro. Yes. Yeah. Fuck yes. That's it. That's All exactly right. it. That's a fucking win right there. The fucking lengths of scripts he was spitting out, like without taking a break, I was like, holy fuck. So, serious question. Your niche, how much have you heard this language? Um, about half of it. That's not bad. Okay, so like rave booty goals, that word? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, keeping quality, quality and quantity of your nutrition? Probably less so. Right, so what's the goal of the fucking rave booty girl? She wants to like show off her glutes and all her food at the rave. Right, so we could also start this and turn around and hit something along the lines of, girl, let's be honest, your glutes don't look the way they look at that fucking rave because you're half-assing your nutrition. Mm -hmm. All right, or girl, let's be honest, you don't look the way that you want to look in your rave fit this week because you're fucking around in your diet. Mm -hmm. It's like right to the point. Yo, they wouldn't let me. Nah. Man's gal wanna come undress me. Spring yeah. with a right, but I might go lefty. Left. I made plus with it, so don't test me. They wouldn't let me. Let Man's gal wanna come undress me. Swing with a right. All right, y'all. First and foremost, if you guys ever get a follow request, friend request from a Facebook that doesn't look like the one that I am running, or an Instagram that doesn't have 300,000 plus followers, or a TikTok that doesn't have one plus million that I am posting on consistently, don't fucking accept it. One of my old friends literally were like, oh, did you make a new Facebook? And I was like, can you send me a screenshot? Cause I didn't. And they sent me a screenshot and I'm like, bro, that's a photo of me from like fucking six years ago. I'm like, <laughs> They're like, oh, he's asking everybody about Bitcoin. And I'm like, when the fuck have I ever talked about Bitcoin online? Like it never. If you get fucking scammed from a scammer saying they're me talking about Bitcoin, when I've been creating content for seven years and I've never talked about crypto because I don't understand it, that is a you problem. All right, I don't have to tell you. I don't have to tell you. That was a dope ass fucking week. All right, we started out uh, day one check in with me feeling like absolute garbage absolute garbage uh, because I caught Brian's little stomach flu, but we caught it very early. Thank you, Brian, for telling me to go to the doctor and getting uh, some antibacterial medicine. Um, what, what are the, what's the actual terminology? Antibiotics? Antibiotics, yeah. thank you. Antibacterial, antibiotics, whatever. <laughs> um, ended up taking that, some Imodium and something else. Pounded that shit, I'm good to go now. All right, my body's completely fine. After around a day and a half, I was good to go. The breakthroughs from this Elite Match of Mastermind, we're fucking insane, all right? We're absolutely insane. But there's one thing, one thing that was said that warmed my fucking heart. And that was from Monty Baines when he said that I remind him of Marcus Aurelius. That is probably the best compliment I have ever gotten in my entire fucking life. Because if you guys have followed me on any social media platform at all, or if you've met me in person and you have asked me, Cole, what is your goal? I have said to be remembered forever. I want to leave a mark on this world that impacts people for generations after I am gone. And Marcus Aurelius is an individual that has done that. All right, his book, his scripture, his words, his quotes, his thoughts and speeches have lasted generations after generations after generations, impacting millions of fucking lives. And that is why I do what I do. That is why I speak my mind. That is try, why I try to pour my soul into every individual I have a conversation with. <coughs> and why I'm now spending as much money and time as I can into the YouTube channel to document my life as a business coach, a mindset coach, a fitness coach, a motivator, a husband, a father, a friend, and as a powerful man that I am trying to become. Subscribe, like, comment, let me know what you took away from this beautiful weekend and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.